kontrolli ukse tule! Need on rohelised, need on kinni! Mis kuleb see nüüd oli? Mis teha? Kontrollige pallast! Kumba pallast, vesi, teisele poole! Kogu vesi! Hannes, a junior working down below in the engine room, hears the instruction. But we had already filled the port side tank, so there was nothing more we could do. As Captain Anderson tries to struggle back to the bridge, most passengers are awoken in their cabins. The Lindstroms are returning home to Sweden from a holiday. Like nearly everyone aboard, their chances of survival from now on depend upon where they're located in the ship and the speed with which they react. 19-year-old Magnus Lindstrom is sharing a cabin with his girlfriend, Katrina, next door to his parents. He reacts immediately. Nearly everyone is disorientated. We had to pull ourselves to the door. For me, it was like a silent movie. I saw everything, but I couldn't hear a thing. Michael Oon's cabin, also on deck four, slants downwards. I said to myself, now, now I must go out and find out what happened. And then I found my camera, put it in one pocket. The seaman of the watch, who had been sent to re-inspect the car deck, is unable to get any lower than the fourth deck. <laughs> Ella has had basic training for an emergency. Such a shock. I remembered from the training to put more clothes on. I took all I saw and put it on. Then I started to climb out of the cabin. Water was behind the window already. Climbing by doorposts towards the exits, any misstep meant falling into the next cabin. Captain Anderson and his crew are now faced with having to make instant, desperately difficult decisions. By bringing the downward side of the ship around, he hopes that the force of the wind and waves against it will help push the Estonia back up into an even keel. It's a tragic miscalculation. Because the furious sea now floods the lower decks at the rate of 20 tons a sec, forcing the ship to list more heavily. Magnus leads his parents and girlfriend to the stairs. For the thousand people aboard, the central stairwells are the only escape. You have to watch out for uh, people coming, sliding from the upper corridor. They run very fast over that hole. At the other side, he meets Michael Oon. Hey, what's going on? What's going on? Don't have to be controlled. This is the roof to us. We must be clear to the higher. The higher, the higher bottom. Magnus and Michael Oon struggle their way upwards towards the open deck. So I go up to deck five and then I recognize that my parents and girlfriend was not with me. So I go down to deck four again and then stands on the other side on the hole. Like many, Magnus's family become paralyzed by the situation around them. My father, he don't say anything, and uh, uh, my mother was, uh, she just stand there, and my, my girlfriend was in shock. So my mother say, told me, run you, save you. No, 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 no
I don't think. I just turn around and start to climb me up from the stairs again. This is the last Magnus will ever see of his family. Annelie soon discovers the perils of the hallway. I really must have been hypnotized. And then I saw this woman lying there, probably unconscious, but I saw blood on her face, and my first thought was that she was dead. I had only one thought in my head. What are you doing standing here? Get out. Get out. We were holding on and saw others who couldn't hold on anymore. And then you just see these people who just sat in the corner, giving up fighting. They were really shocking. The window of survival is closing fast. Women and children, the old and the injured, no longer have the strength to escape. They can only wait as tragedy threatens to strike. As long as you were inside, it felt very much like a trap. But you, you couldn't act in panic, then you were running up and falling down again. Some people were crying in apathy and other people were just doing everything to go out. The last hurdle for Michael Oon is to reach the outer door leading to the deck. I saw there was a locked door and I grabbed it and pulled myself out. For some, the outside deck poses an extra shocking danger. Rolf Sormann scrambles out into the hands of muggers and looters. People that came out were very aggressive and I saw they were taking people's necklaces and gold chains and things like that. And they even did on me. One of these three guys came and took my gold chain. I was frightened. I felt that it's possible to get killed here. The ship's engines now stall completely. The Estonia drifts at the mercy of the Baltic Sea. It's just past 1.20 a.m. and now everyone has just 30 minutes before the Estonia sinks beneath the waves. As the tilt of the ship increases, so the chances of escape diminish. At one moment the main engines stop. As a sailor I know that without the main engines, the ship is unmanageable. The bridge has no option but to announce the emergency code word. As a member of the crew, Hella understands the coded announcement. It's ordering the crew to their fire stations. My duty was to go to the right outer deck. But that part of the ship, where I was supposed to save passengers, was already underwater. Because of the panic created by the extreme list, no organized evacuation is announced. During the commission's investigation, the lack of a planned evacuation was highlighted as a failure of the crew. Over the next 30 minutes, many hundreds of people will die trapped inside the ship. In desperation, the bridge sends out the first distress call. Mayday! Mayday! Estonia! Balloon! Mayday! 14 ships received the message. The closest is the Mariella, just nine miles away. Estonia, Mariella, Estonia, Mariella. But their reply isn't heard. In a state of panic, the second officer ignores procedure. 
He radios blind another ferry, the Silvia Europa, which he thinks may be in the area. Silvia Europa. This creates confusion across the emergency channel. Estonia. Estonia. Silvia Europa. Silvia Europa. Estonia. Silvia Europa. Silvia Europa. Viking. Estonia. But as the situation becomes more desperate, the messages become more muddled. The Commission noted that the radio traffic was not conducted in accordance with the correct procedures. Now the Mariella joins in the confusion of messages. Mariella, look. Mayday, Mayday, Silla Europa. Estonia! 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 As a junior officer forced to take command, the third officer gives no indication of the seriousness of their predicament. The near blackout and severe list prevent him from giving the coordinates of their position. Meil on problem. Tugev talle, paremale. Arvan, et see võiks olla 23 graadi. Kas te saate appi tulla? By now the list is so steep that the Estonia is turned onto its side. Many plunge to their death by falling through the windows to the other side of the ship. The interior becomes an open void from which there is no escape. There was an open window and I felt that air was pressed out of the ship. Then it must be something else coming in and that's water. And then it's a question of time, how long will we stay here? There were a lot of life jackets lying. So I grabbed one and put it on. But I did not know how to strap it. Having escaped the looters, Rolf Sormann now finds he can't get a life jacket. We found the lockers for the life jackets and uh, tried to open one of these doors. And the first door, it was impossible. So they had painted the, the, the lockers. So it was like glue around the, uh, the, whole, the whole door. For many, the pressure to find a life jacket becomes so desperate that some even take them from fellow passengers. I also tried to open one of these um, white round things that include a raft. I didn't know by then that they were actually automatic. Soon the boat started to change again. I really had to move up along the side of the boat, actually climb on the outside of the boat. And I realized I couldn't make this by myself. And that was when I met a girl there. I introduced myself to this girl, her name is Sarah. So I said, my name is Kent, would you like to cooperate with me so we can help each other through these challenges that are ahead? and we made a kind of pact there. Down in the engine room, there's nothing more that Hannes and his fellow engineer can do. I'd been told that if the car track is filled with water, the ship would go down like a rock. It's one of the most dangerous things about those roll-on, roll-off ferries. Then I thought, oops, how did I happen to be at that moment in the lowest part of the ship? So Hannes and his fellow engineer escape up the emergency exit. On the outside, many passengers lose their grip and fall into the sea. Annelie will be one of the very few women to survive. 97% of women passengers will not make it. I remember this box of life jackets. I actually put on two jackets, because I had never tried to put one on before. I was getting tired, couldn't hang on anymore. The next time the ship tilted, I felt like a ripe...